It is Bowel Maintenance Day. It's been a long time. Let's have a look-see. Thank you for joining me on a little overview of my fowls, the summer bloomers and the complex ones. And today I am soaking the novelty fowls, the summer bloomers, with Epsom salts, 300 parts per million, at a 6.0 pH, giving them about 20 minutes, 30 minutes to soak all that up because they aren't looking that hip. And I didn't dare do this during the winter simply because of the temperatures and I'm kind of being mindful about the evaporative cooling of my setup with the LECA and self-watering. But I'm seeing really positive signs on some of them. So here is my Zengmin giraffe. It did not bloom for me last year. Seemed to object a little bit, I guess. I had a bloom from it the first year it arrived. But last year, nothing. What it did last year, however, was give me lots and lots of plantlets. So I have all these little offshoots and now we are going bonkers with regards to spikes. The old one is extending. I've got some new ones tucked in, coming out in many places. There's also one tiny, tiny one under a leaf somewhere, coming out over there. I've got plenty of spikes going on on the giraffe. So this year, I am hopeful to get my giraffe back in bloom. And then I have the cow Kitakut right here, which, hmm, yeah, we've got a leaf that has grown. It seems to be a little bit of a slow grower for me. We've got a little black spot that I have under control. It's never really progressed. And a new root growing. And you can see all this moss here. It's because it was growing roots and I thought, oh, I got to encourage that root there but that was an epic fail. The root just stopped growing. Yeah, even though this moss was fresh at the time. Oh well. Anyway, <clears throat> you can see the yellowing on the leaves on these and the spotting. That to me is magnesium deficiency. So that's what I'm going to try and correct. And here is Pink Toon Bronze Age. Did not bloom for me well last year at all. I only got two blooms. But never mind, you know, can't get it the right all the time. As long as it's growing vegetatively, that's fine. Beautiful orange bronze blooms with gorgeous fragrance as well. It hasn't absorbed the spike though. And might be trying to extend a single bud over there. Huh. Yeah, but nothing else going on with Pinkton Bronze Age. This is my uh, Phalaenopsis violacea, Cerula variety blue, that I got last year from Großrechner Orchideen. A wish list orchid. Just want her to get established. I'm not saying that they're ever super firm in the pot. Not all varieties grow roots vigorously, but at least it has extended and grown this leaf. I just don't like the look. They look sort of dehydrated but it may just be the attribute of the orchid and see even that root didn't like the sphagnum moss and again the sphagnum moss was fresh but you see the they, they're not happy when I put sphagnum moss on them might need to do some tweaking there and here is Cornu Servi Chatalade I only got one leaf from her since last year but the spike hasn't absorbed maybe i'll get some blooms again from her this year and i don't have any signs of new spikes on my chatala day either so we'll just have to wait and see i hope i can perk these guys up a little bit i always have a little bit of a game going with summer bloomers they like it hotter i can't provide that in my dining room i don't use heat mats anymore and here is Tabasco Tex. I lost the spike from last year, but it's growing another one. We'll 
probably do it some good as well to get some magnesium in there. Get it ready for some serious sun. Well, bright light as the warm temperatures are coming soon. Here's my Speciosa cross with Violacea. Very, very slow grower, reluctant to move. No spikes on this one. Oh, hang on a second. Is that a spike? That is possibly a spike. That is a spike. I take it back. I have a spike on my Violacea. Well, Speciosa crossed with Violacea. But it's been, it's been a long, hard road with this one as well. When I got it, this leaf was just growing out, so it did all that funky kink stuff on arrival, and it was winter, so that one stayed kinked, but we have three leaves on the go that are fresh. And a spike, oh my goodness, Julio. And here is Yin's Black Eagle. Very strange that this one isn't more vigorous. I thought it would be. But the leaf is at least a little bit bigger than the year before. And it also absorbed its spike. No spikes on this one as of yet, but that's okay. If it needs to gain more strength, then so be it. I'm glad for it. It's probably bet for the best. So yeah, I have them on the top shelf of the staging area. This is not where they live. They live in the shelf below. But seeing as they're up, getting their magnesium soak, which I only do like twice a year, and usually in spring, to give them a head start. Especially when they start to look a little bit pale, like everybody after a long, cold winter. Just a little bit pale and spotty. So these are all my summer phalaenopsis. Hanging in there. Now let's go and look at the complex ones and see what we're up to there. I knew I had forgotten one. <laughs> oh, this is Leodora's sweet memory. She doesn't live with the others underneath that shelf because of her tall spikes. When she arrived, they were staked. It's not something I would do. But seeing as they were stake on arrival, I've kept it that way. But you see, she also has the deficiency signs. Getting a good soak as well now, but she's progressing on the end of many of her old spikes. And then I have a new one. Thank you, sweet memory. And the first bud is showing as well. After this season, what I think I'm going to do is cut off the three old spikes because I want her to have more energy in vegetative growth. I mean, she's not absorbing her spikes at all but you know they can as pretty as they look and as many blooms as you can get they can get a little bit tired after a certain period of time so yeah this is sweet memory major deficiency showing there I don't know if I can already correct that that already looks pretty bad but we've got to give it a go one bud is already starting to be prominent let's look at the complex fowls now Top shelf dining room dwellers at this stage of the season are complex fowls. I normally have the blurple lights on, but for the sake of the video, I switched them off. This is Ninja Yellow from the Orchid Room. She is persistent. She really is insisting to bloom. I've already cut one spike off and growing out of the same area is another spike. I cannot let that happen. She is not solid in her pot. And that root needs to get into the pot. So there's some work to be done on Ninja Yellow. But as she is not established or any way happy yet in my environment, that spike is coming off, but I'm waiting for it to become a little bit more budded out before she tries again. Yeah, from her previous owner at the Orchid Room, she is used to being majorly well treated and she wants to bloom but i can't allow that here i've been struggling with complex fowls for years if you're new to my channel that is why i'm so pedantic about them this is alexandra I haven't seen her blooms for two years but we have a little spike growing there it's not going to be the show that i'm used to from her 
but she is now established in her pot and that is what is important. Pot Kiss back there is doing really well. Never a big, big bloomer, maybe eight or nine blooms every year, no matter how big she gets. Also established in her pot. So we'll get some Pot Kiss blooms. And then, sorry for the backlighting, but if I turn around, I'm too close to the shelf and everything is so squashed up. So I did it the other direction. I hope that the light is okay. And here's Maximilian. Be great to see him again. Two years, no blooms on this one. Again, needing to get the orchid established in the pot before depleting the energy out of them by just wanting to see the blooms. It's gonna be not as big a spectacle as I expected, but it's going to be anything better than it was last year, seeing as I cut 13 spikes off in the season of 2019 to 20. So that's Maximilian. And then over here, let me pan slowly, you can see there to the right, Lemon Sherbert, super orchid, never objected to the Lekka and self-watering like the others have had problems with, but still I kept the spike off last year as well. I'm gonna get some Lemon Sherbert blooms. To the left is the Bubblicious, also has a spike coming out. And then we've got Harlequin, and right at the end there, Bubba is starting to bloom. So everybody is going to be blooming this year. I'm sorry, this one down here is Harlequin. And the one up there, second from the left, is Walter Senior, because we do have a Walter Junior. And we are going to have a look at Walter Junior as well, because that would give us a colony update. Look at this whale flipper, whatever size leaf here from Harlequin. That was the one that grew in the summer of 20. And I had the spike cut of this one as well. The second leaf, not as big. And I think that's going to be the rhythm of how mine will grow. One substantial leaf and one not so big because of the timing of the seasons. The minute the spike grows, that's where the energy goes. It's going to be gorgeous though. It'll be good to see Harlequin back. Little bit of a Phalaenopsis Shiliriana update. Look, there she is. Takes forever for these blooms to open. They've gotten a little bit bigger than from the Care Collab video. And just today, I'm sensing a little bit of their fragrance. Almost there, and then she will be filling the room with her gorgeous, gorgeous rose fragrance. Let me just go up really slowly. There, you can see Bubblicious. I did the video of the transition of Bubblicious into Lekka and self-watering. I was very nervous about it, as I usually am when it comes to complex Phalaenopsis. But again, this one just didn't object. And I've lost quite a few, and I don't know what I've done different. Even using heat mats, I've lost complex phalaenopsis, but this one jumped right in and we're gonna get ourselves some gorgeous big lip pink bloom. Super happy that that worked well. Okay, then let's go and look at the other ones. That's Sweetheart tucked in back there because of all the funky roots growing. I have no space on the shelves with the other guys where she will get enough light. You can see on the left, big leaf, one of the season during the summer, and then the winter leaf just stopped. Sweetheart will not be blooming this year. There is no spike, but as long as she keeps doing what she's doing, and yes, I've got two spiders in that pot, and they are very much appreciated because Sweetheart is a total happy sap production machine, and I've been wiping her regularly throughout the winter to make sure there's no scale or pest attack or any mealybugs coming into and attacking my orchid. I don't need that. So two spiders live in that pot. They're my little helpers and I'm very, very appreciative of them. And I'm going to get Walter Jr. out from the corner there. Let's have a look-see because he is in Colomy. All right, I know this looks weird, but this is the bottom of the pot of the Colomy. 
I'm going to link the video I did about Colomy and putting Walter Jr. in there so that you understand why I'm showing you this because Colomy has but is supposedly the holy grail. No fertilizer needed for five years and it has all these antifungal, anti blah 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 things going on as far as their marketing is concerned. But you can see that it's not anti-algae. And he's been watered three days ago, so he's starting to drink a lot more than before. There should only ever be a smidgen of water on the bottom. But you can see one root kind of looks like it's gone downhill, but it continues to be green in the pot. And in its own right, it is all, there's also roots extending down and into the pot. It's very difficult to film. And you can see that there are some roots that are still doing quite well. But here, the root tip has stopped. So it's a bit of a, I don't know what to say about this setup. I'm going to keep going. Walter Jr. wants to bloom. Well, that's not going to happen. That spike is coming off now that the buds have formed. And this, I would say, is a deficiency. Again, this orchid has not had any fertilizer because according to Colomy, there is no need. So you see what's going on here. But I'm going to keep going, seeing as Walter Senior is doing really well. But I will cut the spike so that this one can have some time to recover. And then I want to get Bubba down because at the beginning of the video, you saw what I was trying to do build and let's see if that works. So just to wrap this up, we're going to get Bubba and have a look. There she is. Bubba is back. Oh, I'm used to having her with much more blooms, but my goodness, I am not going to be greedy. So happy to see this one again. Two years later, Right, the situation is as follows with Bubba. During the winter, again, I have to be super cautious because of my evaporative cooling based on my setup and I do not use heat mats. And you can see what's happened. Bit by bit, I've been losing new root growth. Uh, I tried to do something with sphagnum moss, didn't like it, again, burnt root tips. So there is a root going down into the media. That is what I'm banking on at the moment, keeping that one happy. This is super important. But if I were to unpot this plant and do something with it, it would go into immediate rescue mode. I know it. This is my third attempt at getting a Bubba Phalaenopsis to make it. She's the third, Bubba 3.0. <laughs> right, so at the beginning of the video, I did a little kind of a gizmo and now I want to see if it works, what I was thinking of. So I'm going to put you on a tripod and let's start to go with a fiddle. So you see how that root failed, even though it had sphagnum moss on it. But underneath, there's a nice clear root going in. So I'm not going to cut that back. I have to make sure that every little bit stays in the pot that is possible. The idea now being that, see here's another failed root. That's why I'm not going to get her out of the pot. I'm going to let her bloom long enough for all the buds to open, and then I'm going to cut the spike again. But for now, I'm just going to protect that one bit of root that's down here with some fresh sphagnum moss, because that is what it's used to. I'm not going to mess around with pop filter there like I would if it was a new orchid. In future, this would be hop filter stuff that I'm doing. But for now, I'm sticking with the sphagnum moss. I'll just freshen it up. Okay, and with regards to the stem, let's see if this works because clearly I have difficulty keeping humidity around the base, especially during the winter. I am not spraying the base much at all because I have to be super careful even though I try to make sure that the sphagnum moss always has some form of humidity on it but 
with these bubble fells, like I said, it's my third one. I'm finding it to be a reluctant root grower. So I've made this little thing here. And what I'm hoping to do is make like a little tent around the pot over the base of the orchid because it's only going to get warmer now. <laughs> It's going to get even harder to actually keep it humid when the hot winds come. And all these factors are now going to start to prove themselves to become a problem. And then there would be more spraying, more risk of stem rot, and all that stuff. So I thought I'm going to make myself this little gizmo here, which is being a bit unruly, and I apologize. We've got to get it right. And then, like a protective hood, just cover the base with a lot of aeration around it and stick it in to make it fit. So this is the idea. Now, clearly I need to do a little bit more adjusting, which I will do off camera and I'll be back and show you the point. Okay, I've fiddled around a little bit and made my stakes a little longer, bent the hood a little bit more. And I'm hoping that this fits now, so I can just place it into the pot. Because I can still flush the orchid around the edges and do all that stuff, but what I'm planning to, what I'm thinking of is protecting the stem from any of the radical spraying that I do in the summer, but all I'm going to do is spray the top here of the hob material. Because I now have to start growing roots all over again, which is such a shame. And realistically, I shouldn't let her bloom, but I'm going to. This time I'm going to. But you see the idea? There we go. The stem is protected. There's aeration. And I can keep this top part super wet and create a humid environment down in the pot. And hopefully encourage some root growth. This is this is sort of a thing I've been thinking of the last couple of days. And well, I'm going to give this a go. It's either that or Baba will go, which I don't want. I think that she's a gorgeous little orchid, big, if I can take care of her properly. And I want her in my collection. So let's see what happens next. But yeah, let's hope that this little contraption works. And if it does, maybe others will come into the mix as well one day. Not right now, they're doing okay. But we've had some good news with the Vilacia spike, the Leodoro bud. And now I'm going to take all the magnesium out of the pots and give every single summer fell a very, very good flush. And then add some more fertilizer into the reservoir. And let's hope I can correct the issues. So thank you very, very much for watching. If you've stayed to the end, I really, really appreciate it. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Stay safe, everybody. Take care. Bye.